Hi and welcome to the Sew Essential vlog. I hope you're all well. We've had a really busy summer here at Sew Essential but I've managed to find time to learn a few new sewing techniques so I wanted to share some of those with you today. Um, these are techniques that Angela's taught me that are just a really nice way to add a bit of pretty feminine detail to an otherwise very plain or simple garment and they're really really easy to master with the right tools as well. So on the screen now you'll be able to see a lovely blouse that Angela made and it's got beautiful pin tucks on it that are perfectly spaced that run perfectly parallel to one another and it's also got ribbon embellishment on it as well again very beautifully sewn absolutely perfect in terms of the symmetry and the spacing of it um, so I'll show you how to do all of those things and achieve those results in some demonstration videos today and then in addition to that I'm also going to show you how to use a Spanish hem foot or a Spanish hem stitch foot um, and that is done that is used to create this effect so I'm just going to hold it up to the camera for you now you should be able to see three lines of stitching one two three and there's a slight gap in the fabric and then we've used fancy stitches to bridge that gap and I'm sure you'll agree it's a really really pretty detail that you could use on so many different sewing projects so I'll show you how to do that as well all of the sewing machines that I refer to today and the feet um, are available on our website so just have a look, we'll put links below for you as always and there'll be links popping up on the screen. Um, give us a shout if you can't find what you're looking for but one thing I will say is it's really really important to ch check the compatibility with your make and model of machine. Um, obviously you know you want that foot, so if you're going to buy a foot you want it to be the right one for your machine so you know they're not always universal, there are specific ones for specific machines so just make sure you check that. Um, but first up we'll talk now about pin tucks. So, I've already shown you Angela's blouse but I just think there are so many great examples out there of really really beautiful garments where pin tucks are used so you'll be able to see some of those on the screen now blouses dresses tops um just a really really nice nice feature I suppose um so you can get sewing patterns that have got pin tucks already built into the design and there will be some of those on the website um, but if you've got a simple plain pattern like a simple shell top would work well or a simple blouse you can add pin tucks in and it's relatively easy to do so you've got two options for doing this you can either adjust your pattern pieces so calculate how many pin tucks you want and what the spacing will be and then add that width into your pattern piece before cutting your fabric out or an alternative method which Angela recommends is sew the pin tucks into your fabric first and then place your pattern pieces on and cut them out um, and yeah that just works really well because you can position them every, exactly where you want them you haven't got to do any horrible maths it's really straightforward so um, two different options there and another place where I often see pin tucks used as well which I think is a really nice idea is on home deck items so particularly bed linen and cushions and those sorts of things um, the white company absolutely love a nice pin tuck I've seen pin tucks on loads of their bin bed linen and also their clothing as well so lots of different places where you can use this technique now the easiest way to do pin tucks there are different methods but is to use a pin tuck foot so I've got one here to show you and this is a five groove pin tuck foot so you'll be able to see there are five grooves that run along the bottom of that foot um, and what you do is you just put that on your machine in the normal way and you use a twin needle um, usually a twin needle of between 1.6 and 2 mil is about right um, you have to adjust the top tension on your um, machine as well so that it just gathers the fabric slightly between the two lines of stitching to create the pin tuck and then you sew away and I'll show you in the video now you can watch me demonstrating it and talking you through how to how to use the foot I've got my pin tuck foot on the machine and I'm just going to place my fabric under the foot where I want to start sewing the first pin tuck. I've put the foot down, I'm going to just put the foot down now and I'm going to go ahead and sew and then that's as simple as it is really, obviously I've got the twin needle in the machine and I've put the top tension up a bit so it's gathering the fabric slightly but once I've got the length of pin tuck that I require I'm going to remove the fabric from the machine and as I mentioned earlier I've used a contrasting thread so it's easier for you to see 
and just see the way that increased tension has gathered the fabric you can see on the back there how that's worked um, and it's just gathered the fabric between those stitching lines to create the pin tuck and now I'm going to place the pin tuck I've created under one of the grooves on the pin tuck foot and then I'll be able to create my next pin tuck next to it so just push the foot down and start stitching and that pin tuck, the previous pin tuck will be in position in that groove as I stitch my way down and what that means is that I'm creating two evenly spaced parallel pin tucks which will look lovely and neat so when I remove the fabric now you can see that they're just nice and evenly spaced they're running parallel to each other and I'll just show you around um, the other way as well I'll just turn the fabric round so you can see horizontally as well they just look really really neat um, and then I positioned the last pin tuck to the right of the original one. Now if I want to want, do one to the left of the original one, I just use this groove on the other side of the foot, position that over the original pin tuck and stitch away. And as you can see, I'm doing exactly the same thing, but just on the other side. And this is where um, the five groove and the seven groove pin tuck feet come in um, a seven tuck seven groove obviously just allows you a bit more room to create more pin tucks more easily um, but I think you'll agree it's really simple and straightforward and the results are excellent and that's the pin tuck foot so the next technique I'm going to share with you is the Spanish hem stitch foot um, so these are available again for a wide range of machines just check for compatibility check on the website but here is the foot itself so this the, this part just looks pretty much like a normal machine foot apart from this little lever on the front there and you just attach that to the machine in the normal way and then on the needle plate you place this other part which has got a metal bar running down the middle of it and then it's got these little hooks on the bottom and they clip into the needle plate and then this metal bar that runs down the middle if you remember the sample that I showed you um, you've got two pieces of fabric to create a gap and then you do the fancy stitches to bridge the gap well this metal bar helps you to keep a nice even gap when you're stitching and you'll see that demonstrated in the video um, but you did, the only other thing I need to mention is you just need to adjust the stitch width on your machine because obviously you need your stitches to be wide enough to bridge the gap. I adjusted my stitch width to about seven. I was using a faff machine at the time. And then the other thing to mention is you'll probably get better results if you use an embroidery thread, a machine embroidery thread um, for those fancy stitches. But other than that, as you'll see in the video, it's really, really straightforward. So I'll let you watch the video now and see what you think. So I've attached the foot to the machine and the other part to the needle plate and as you can see I've pressed the seam allowances under by about half an inch. I'm then going to position the pieces of fabric either side of the metal part on the needle plate and I've taken care to make sure the fabric's positioned correctly for when I start stitching so it needs to be just down slightly from the raw edge. And then I'm going to stitch, feeding the fabric through evenly, making sure it stays butted up against that metal part in the middle on either side. So I'm just going to start stitching now. And the stitching, it, it does move through the machine fairly slowly because they're fancy stitches. Um, obviously there's a lot going on, there's a lot of movement with the needle, so it does feed through more even, um, slowly. And then I'm just going to make sure I keep those pieces of fabric positioned nice and evenly either side of that metal pole. So you probably just want to stop at regular intervals and just make sure everything's lined up correctly. Um, and that's as simple as it is really, you just keep stitching until you've completed the section that you want to making sure that you just you don't have to do a lot at all you're not guiding the fabric particularly just making sure you you're keeping it in position and then when you finish that length of stitching just take it off the machine and you can see the results are really really pretty just a really lovely decorative touch I suppose to add to you know a garment or home deck project whatever you want to use it on really but just something really unusual um, and just adds a little bit of interest 
So the final technique I'm going to share with you is the ribbon stitches embellishment. Um, really, really pretty feature and it is patented by Faf, so it is only available on Faf machines, but I haven't got a Faf machine and personally I think it's always interesting to see what's at the forefront of sewing technology. So it's a really, really clever feature. Um, I use the Faf Creative 4.5 to demonstrate it, but it's also available on the Faf Sensation Pro embroidery machine and the Faf Performance 5.2 sewing machine as well. And you'll see from the video, it really does everything for you. Um, it's really, really clever technology. So I'll let you watch this and have a look now. So here I'm going to demonstrate embellishing with ribbon stitches so I've selected the program on the machine and the relevant foot as directed by the machine and I'm just going to stitch out the first fancy stitch sequence and I've just got my foot down and it's stitching it out and then what will happen is it will stop automatically at the end of the sequence and at that point now when it's stopped I know that I need to position my ribbon so I'm using a ribbon that is five to six mil wide and I'm just positioning that at 45 degrees across under the um, machine foot and across where the needle is. And then I'm going to stitch out the next sequence holding that ribbon in place, but obviously it's stitched into the fabric fairly quickly. So there's not a great deal you have to do there and you can just carry on stitching again until that second sequence is complete and the machine will automatically stop again. So you can see that's happened there. And now I'm just going to fold the ribbon back on itself and put it at 45 degrees in the other direction and repeat again. And it's just really, really simple technique because the machine does do all the work for you. Um, fantastic bit of technology, really. It's great to just see the possibilities that some of these machines have and stitch out the next sequence. And again, that will automatically stop for me when it's ready. And then all I need to do is position the ribbon in the same way that I did previously, folding it back across itself at 45 degree angles, making sure that that lines up with the original angle of the first piece of ribbon, and then stitching the next sequence out. And you can see it's a really effective um, design, just a really nice way to embellish things and make them totally unique in your own and very, very simple to do. But that is thanks to the fantastic technology that is available on these FAF machines. But I think it's always just nice to see that technology that's at the forefront of sewing. It's amazing now what some of these computerised embroidery machines and sewing machines can do. So I'm just stitching out another sequence here just so that you can see a nice little section of this ribbon embellishment. Um, the best example is on Angela's um, lovely blouse that I showed at the beginning of this um, vlog and she's done this sort of running in parallel lines down the front of the blouse and it looks absolutely lovely. Um, but here you can just see the little section that I've completed and the ribbon does need a little press and then that's it, you, you're all finished with a lovely bit of detail. So I hope you've enjoyed all of the videos and um, please like and subscribe if you like what you've seen today. As always, there'll be links below to our website, our blog and where you can get all of the different products that I've talked about. Um, so that's it from me today and I hope to see you next time. Bye.